All right, and we are going live. I'm going to tweet out this link real quick. PJ Duke, youngest ever New York State champion, which as a New Yorker, I'm proud of. Um, your accolades, most people know. Two-time New York State champ, two-time Super 32 champ, Super 32 high school finalist, Fargo champ, Ironman champ. You have been just through the absolute gauntlet. You have been out there competing like a dog. How are you, man? I'm doing pretty good. How you doing? I'm doing good. I'm excited. I was talking to Khaled last night about some stuff, and he said you had made your decision. I said, listen, instead of just putting a graphic out, let's get this live. Let's uh, let's turn this into a little 20, 30-minute interview video. So first of all, you got injured back in February. How are you feeling? Do you know your return to competition yet? Yeah, so um, at, at Ironman, I, I jacked up my shoulder at surgery in, in, um, in January, and then um, – just getting back into it now been going live a little bit and um it's feeling great i don't want to rush too much back into competition there's no need now especially that i'm done committing to my college and um i'm definitely looking forward to compete though i mean i love competing and that's that's my favorite thing to do so I'm not sure exactly when the next tournament's going to be but um should be fun yeah, and I, we were talking about it before that as a fellow new yorker you know i've been pumped to watch your career there's obviously that new york pride and you were the youngest New York State champion ever. I was rooting for you to become the first six-timer. And then yeah. COVID issues messed that up. You know, you've had this yeah. injury now. You're young with a lot of accolades, and it seems like you've had to mature kind of quickly dealing with COVID, these injuries. Do you feel like that on your end? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. I mean, um, I guess you could say I'm mature. It's just I don't really know. It's kind of like how my life is going, so it's just – yeah. Um, Nothing too crazy, but yeah, it's just how it's going. I love it. I, I read an article and talking about your recruiting. I want to talk a little bit more about your career, but let's talk recruiting first and your decision. I read an article not too long ago that you were taking your time and you were you know, trying to be calculated with this. You're seeing some kids nowadays either recruit too early and then they, they flip commitments. They, you know, elongate the process kind of all over the spectrum there with recruiting. How has the process been for you specifically? Um, I mean, honestly, since day one, I haven't been a huge fan of recruiting. It's, it's a lot of work and it's a lot of attention and I'm not huge on attention. So I, <laughs> I can feel about that stuff. But um, I mean, it was, it was definitely a fun experience. It only happens once. So it's pretty cool. A lot of people told me it's a, it's a great opportunity and it was, it was fun, but definitely a relief off my shoulders now that it's complete and, uh, excited for the next chapter. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, it's in this day and age of, of recruiting, got to bring up NIL when a top recruit picks somewhere. Nowadays, you know, first of all, everybody brings up the big elusive big bags of money everybody's getting. So to ask the question, so many I'm sure want to know, how did NIL play a role or did in it in your recruiting process? Um, For me, I, I'm, I mean – Money was obviously a factor, but for me, I just wanted to go somewhere I'm going to be happy. I didn't want to have money kind of make my make my choice for me. So I, I just want to be somewhere where I'll be happy and I'd be able to, you know, have a good time and be able to, to live. Not have to worry about money as an option, but um, it, it had no, no effect. It's also crazy that you're getting deals in high school already where, you know, your accolades certainly warrant it, but you signed a deal with Takedown already for apparel. What was that like yeah. getting that deal so young and knowing that you have this responsibility now? You know, the money's great, but also at a young age, there's a lot of responsibility with that. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's been pretty easy for me. The Takedown guys are awesome. So um, I've been wearing Takedown forever, so I thought it was such a cool opportunity to be able to work with them. And it's it's... It's honestly not bad. I mean, Dustin's helped me out a lot. He's going to help me out a lot in the future, and I'm super excited for what's to come with that. So it really hasn't been easy. KD also helped me get in touch with Dustin, which I really do appreciate, and it's it's been it's been pretty easy for me so far. What do you think has been the hardest part of the recruiting process for you? Ask somebody who doesn't like attention. You know, recruiting sounds fun to some. It also sounds daunting to others, especially if you don't want the spotlight and you don't want – you just kind of want to train, recover – heal up all that stuff what's been the hardest part of it for you well for me i'm, I'm pretty much done with it now i would say definitely yeah. like as you as you get recruited you build relationships with coaches and um 
just having to call them and, you know, break the news that you're not going to their school is definitely, it's pretty heartbreaking, especially if you've known them for a little while now, a couple of years. Um, just, just kind of like, you know, it's just how business is and you just gotta, it's just gotta happen. So for you, when you are, you know, you're on Willie's big board as the number one guy in the class of 2025, when you're so highly favored and sought after, does that change for you? How you look and how your top five, your top six are formed. You know, I didn't really tweet it out when I put the graphic out earlier that you were gonna come on and make a decision because it seems like throughout your recruiting process, so much of it has been Northeast based. And, but for you, it's kind of like when you are so high up on that ladder where what school isn't interested in you, you know? Does that change how you kind of form a top five, top 10, whatever it might be, and kind of look at who you want to, where you want to go? Um, For me, like uh, the location definitely played a role because I don't want to go too far away from my family where they, they won't be able to ever see me and they won't be able to see me compete. So yeah. that was definitely a pretty big factor. But um, honestly, I just think that the number one ranking thing, it's, I mean, I don't think rankings really mean anything. So for me, don't really tell was, Willie that Willie, he, yeah. she's just kidding. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it was, it wasn't really a big factor for me. Uh, yeah. I tried, I tried to be level headed and I, I could care less about that stuff. Yeah. So before we talk more about your courage, I want to talk a little bit. Let's talk about your decision. This is a big one. Everybody in the wrestling world should be paying attention to this. What is your decision for your college career and why? Um, so I've decided to go, go to Penn State. And um, I mean, Penn State kind of speaks for itself with their, their talent. And I mean, they've proven they can win. And that's what I want to do. I want to be able to win at the world level, win the Olympic titles, national titles. And I think like the chances of doing that there are probably pretty much the highest out of anywhere else. And I just think it's been proven time and time again that they build champions and I want to be a champion. So. Yeah. And when you talk about Penn state, there's a lot of different things people get excited about when you're talking about a wrestler coming in the room. What do you think you're most looking forward to? You know, obviously you want to win championships, but what would you say you're looking forward to the most of, of getting out to state college? There's, there's definitely a lot of things I'm looking forward to, but I mean, I think just, the next level partners being able to wrestle with the guys like the RTC guys just in the room every day. So I think that's really where I'm going to jump levels. And especially the, the coaching staff is amazing there. Um, I'm, I'm thankful for the opportunity to be able to, to go there and be able to wrestle for them. But honestly, I just think it's the coaching staff and, and the partners. It's, it's, I think it's just going to change my wrestling and for the better. Yeah. And you know, when people hear that Penn state gets another one, Penn state gets another one, whether it's transfers, whether it's recruits, there's a lot to be said about Penn State getting so much desire from the top wrestlers in the country going there. And, you know, it's funny we're having this conversation a week removed from two Penn State kids, Zane and David, winning world medals, two senior level transfers, Dakin Snyder, winning medals. Does that factor into the decision? I know you were just in state college. When you see that success on the world level, does that play into your decision? Uh, absolutely. I, I mean, I'm a firm believer in if like you got to prove, prove your talk. So, I mean, they've, they've done it. Like, they got world champs everywhere. You look at the wall, there's, there's so many national champs, so many world champs. It's, I mean, I, I like if I was, if I wasn't a wrestler and I saw how good Penn State was, that's where I'd want to be. And if I am a wrestler, that's where I want to be. So, um, definitely super excited. When you've had so many accolades already, we were already talking about earlier when we first hopped on, you know, you have that long list of accolades. And now as you move on to this next chapter of your career here soon, what are your expectations for yourself? You know, everybody says, I want to be a four-time NCAA champ. I want to be world Olympic champ. For you, is it just setting that goal and seeing what happens? What are your expectations now? You know, you have you know, I'll call it the best room in the country, the best coaches in the country, the best training partners in the country. I'm a Penn State fan. I don't hide that. So for you, knowing you're heading into that room, what are your expectations for yourself? I'm definitely going to obviously set my standards high, shoot for the stars. And um, if there's some bumps in the roads and it doesn't happen, then uh, so be it. But just perfecting the craft of wrestling and trying to become a better person. There's a lot of good people in the room. Um, teach me how to teach me not only about wrestling, just about life and growing as a person. Yeah. 
I want to talk for just a few minutes. And I'm going to let you go enjoy this night. But, you know, talking about your career a little bit, as I was talking to Willie about it, talking to KD about it, you know, there's so many exciting things about your career that, you know, people are already texting me today. Like there was rumors out there, you know, you're going to Penn State, you're going to Penn State and Penn State fans already getting excited. And, you know, there's a lot of different, there's a lot of different reasons to get excited. And, you know, one of them, was talking to Willie and KD both today about you bumping up, taking on Ladarian Lockett journeyman event last November, bumping up two weight classes. You know, that kind of shows if I'm talking about who PJ Duke is, that kind of, for me, like that says a lot right there. You're willing to put it all on the line, wrestle up to two weights. When you look forward to your college career, can Penn State fans expect some wild card matches like that? Um. Possibly, uh, I think college and college, high school are completely different. So, yeah, um, college is definitely definitely a lot higher of a level. So, I, I think just being able to jump around and beat everyone in every way is going to be a lot harder. But, um, <laughs> well, of course. <laughs> you know, you know, you know, what what went into wanting to bump up for that match? Um, I kind of just wanted to prove, like, um, obviously before the match, I was pound for pound number two, and I kind of just wanted to prove, like, hey, I should be number one, and that's what I did. Yeah, and speaking of big matches, you've won so many. That match against Lockett, state championship finals, Super 32, Fargo finals, so many. You're very early into your career. Hopefully you stay healthy, have a long, successful career. But have you had any favorite matches so far that you really, that maybe stick out to you, that maybe Penn State fans that want to get a glimpse? You know, there's a lot of college fans that don't necessarily follow high school wrestling. If there's Penn State fans, college wrestling fans that want to go back and get a good glimpse of who PJ Duke is, what are some of your favorite matches? I would say for me, my favorite I, um, was definitely my seventh grade high school title. I thought it was pretty cool just because I was the first one ever to do it. Yeah. So that'll be, it'll be in the history books. But um, that, that one was one of my favorites. I think both Super 32 titles were pretty fun. Um, wrestling in front of that big crowd is always always a good time winning the belt in a, one of the toughest tournaments in the country. So just I, I enjoy I enjoy the big matches. I enjoy the pressure. And um, I've been doing it my whole life. So competing at like Reno Worlds, all the youth tournaments, my parents always put me in pressure and um, high seek matches. So I'm kind of just getting used to it now. And hopefully that'll help me out when I get to even bigger stages like college and hopefully world level. Yeah, no, for sure. Um, simple question, but I'm assuming, you know, Willie predicted or projects you to go 57. You're, you're a ways away. You know, you're graduating 2025. But is that still the projected weight, you think, 57? Yeah, I would definitely say um, 57 or 65 because I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to weigh. Yeah, I don't it's, it's a little bit away. I don't know what I'm going to weigh yeah. next week. <laughs> yeah, but um, I, don't, I don't expect myself to get taller or bigger so i'll probably be somewhere around here talk to me a little bit about kd because he's the reason you're on here he's a bash solutions client of mine we've gotten to know each other a little bit and you know i i laughed when i said you were coming on to the show and people instantly said you're going to penn state and i wouldn't have cared if you were going to iowa cornell ohio state whatever i would have had you on um I'm actually going to, we talked about it before, but I'm actually, I think, going to try to have like four Penn State recruits on in a row. So at the fifth time, they're all assuming somebody's going to Penn State and then he's going to announce Iowa. It'll mess everybody up. But talk to me a little bit about your relationship with, with KD. Yeah, so I've known KD since I was in elementary school, like fourth grade probably. He was in high school at the time. We went to the same club. And um, ever since he graduated high school, he started coaching and um, I've just always had like a kind of a soft spot for him like he was a bigger brother to me and um we went we uh he used to coach at the old club and then he opened up his own place and um i just followed him and it, 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 things have worked out great he's um he's definitely one of the most loyal people you ever met and he's done so much for me and i can't thank him enough same with my parents they've they've done so much for me and i really do appreciate everything they've done and i wouldn't i wouldn't i wouldn't be here talking to you or committed to fancy if it wasn't for my parents or kd so i'm super thankful for them yeah, and Katie could not speak more high about you. He speaks so highly of you, and that's why when he's like, you know, I said, let's have him on. Let you know, let's have a little interview instead of just a quick graphic going out. So, mm -hmm. all right, I'm excited, man. That's all I got for you. Um, you got another year left. Still, some high school wrestling people can start watching, and um, 
and, and get excited for the career. But yeah, go and follow him at PJ Duke on Instagram. Are you on Twitter? No, nah, I don't have Twitter. I'm we just might, on Instagram. Yeah, we might have to get you on Twitter. Maybe we, we'll see. We we might at least like lock in a profile, let some people tag you, yeah. retweet. Yeah. <laughs> All right, cool. PJ, congrats on your commitment. Thanks for uh, making it on Bash Mania. I always appreciate that. And listen, any other top recruits, this isn't just for Penn State. You want to go commit to Iowa? Come on <laughs> here. Let's mess with some people. So, all right, sweet man, you have a good night, and we'll uh, right. we'll talk soon. I appreciate you having me on. Of course, man. We'll have you back on soon. Yep, have a good night. All right, buddy. See ya.